What's the worst case of bad parenting you've ever witnessed? Written about this before, was at a friend's party. Her 6 yo found some gross ancient backwash butt end of a cola under the porch, ran up to the picnic table we were all sitting at and poured it into her uncle's beer. At our tax bracket, you treasure your beer man. Everyone went dead silent, looked over at her mother. Oh h a h a, isn't she just so cute and funny? And my brain broke and I snapped. No, she's not. Nothing about that was cute or funny. Apologize to your uncle. Kid went on to do other cute and funny things like get banned from the local dance school and have her school have to buy bite guards for her teachers. We had one conversation about it, wherein I was informed that she couldn't be mean to her. It hurts my heart. To which I responded well I guess as long as your needs are being met. And she nodded enthusiastically. We don't talk anymore. I worked at CPS for many years. Tying your children to the bed is more common than the story out of California is suggesting. I know a mother that lets her son basically walk all over her. He yells at her, swears at her, calls her a bee to her face, and she always just says yes to him. It is really kinda sad. My previous downstairs neighbor was a large family, and the youngest kid was like 6 or 7, and 24 stroke 7 would be running around stomping his feet, screaming at the top of his lungs. The parents never did anything. What really set it off, is when at about 2 am, he turned on the gas on the stove, and then went to bed. I woke up, smelled the gas, and had called the fire department, grabbed my most important stuff, safe of important papers, and my case with my rack mount audio gear, laptop, and studio monitors in it, and ran outside. After everything is all over with, about 5.30 am, I had class at 8 am, and the mother comes to me yelling at me about calling the fire department. I have seen a lot of bad parents. But that takes a cake in my opinion. Lived in a condo and came home from work to see a small child no older than 7 crying outside the entrance door. It was negative 1 out so it was extremely cold out. I let her inside and we walked to her condo. Knocked on her door but no answer. I sat on the stairs with her and called the police. The cops came and I went down to my condo. After 15 minutes the police knocked on my door and told me what happened. The mom was home the entire time. She deliberately wouldn't buzz her kid in as punishment for forgetting the key code and waking her up with the buzzer. But it was negative freaking one outside. Wow I hope you aren't using fair and hate. Girl I knew in high school thought it was a privilege for her child to eat and wouldn't feed him unless his chores were done. He's three. That might be a result of the way she was raised herself. Crappy parenting all round. My cousin was never told the word no growing up if she didn't want to do something she wasn't made to do it. It started when she was 2 years old and didn't want soap with her bath. As a child they would let her interrupt any conversation they were having instead of telling her to wait. Things like this went on for nearly 20 years. The end up result is person who is now in her mid 20s and doesn't use soap to bath. She smells we've talked to her about it. She's difficult to have a conversation or really any sort of interaction with her because she doesn't fully understand the concept of no. This also results in her being unable to hold a job even though she has a masters. She just gets in arguments with her bosses without realizing it and is then let go for unprofessional behavior. I used to work at Chuck E. Cheese. And boy I saw a lot of bad parenting. A lot of people would use Chuck E. Cheese as a free babysitting service, since it was technically free to get in, and they would actually take naps at the tables not buy tokens for their kids. This would happen all the time, and since I worked the floor and fixed the games, I would often just give these kids some tokens so they could at least play a couple of games. Bad stuff went down a Chuck E. Cheese. One time a dad pulled a knife on another dad because he thought that he stole his daughter's tickets. To avoid having to do it herself she would have her 6 year old daughter get cigarettes butts that still had some life left from the places outside of stores. I was a freestyle ski coach for kids aged around 7-12 years old. This was a pretty tough job because it was at a private ski club. Which means these kids are mostly from pretty wealthy families. Many of whom are being raised spoiled. Not to mention that their parents have just dumped them into any old program so that they can drink in the lounge while their kids are being babysat in the cold. To add to this, we were fairly understaffed. Meaning that all of us coaches had a few more kids than we were equipped to handle. But most of the parents cared little for any of these things. 
Some of the parents were actually interested in their kids learning the sport, and you could tell how engaged they were, and these kids were, without fail, always the best ones. On the other hand, there were kids like Eric. Eric was really poorly behaved, never wanted to listen, never participated in activities, always wanted to stray from the group. We were used to this as coaches, but around the second or third lesson his mom came to us to tell us that Eric has hydrocephalus, also known as water on the brain disease. In other words, he has a reduced sense of orientation coupled with a very, very high risk for concussive injuries. After she told us this we were all in utter disbelief that she had placed her kid in a program to go off jumps on skis, and we told our boss. But there wasn't much we could do other than let Eric misbehave and opt out of our lessons every time. I think it was the lesson after the one where the mom informed us about Eric when he fell while skiing down to our activity and got a bloody nose. Upon seeing his own blood, and probably in addition to his condition, Eric starts freaking out to the point where we got ski patrol involved. After that we told our boss that we would never be taking Eric with us again. Went with my wife to her friend's house from where she worked. Friend has a 4 year old son who was just wound up from the start. Jumping on everyone. Yelling all the time. And the parents would just smile and ignore him. Kid gets a bath which gave me and the father time to talk. Oh that's normal. Can't correct him otherwise it might turn him against us you know. Kid comes out if the bath wearing a towel around his neck like a cape and jumps on me while laughing and shaking his privates in my face. Parents are just standing to the side thinking it was so cute. I seriously have never wanted the power to teleport so badly as I did at that moment. I went to go drop my 3 year old off with her mom. Her mom was in a hurry so she asked me to put our daughter directly into her car seat in her car. When I did I noticed that the car seat was just resting on the seat. Literally not buckled in at all. I calmly tell her that the seat isn't hooked up. She says it's too hard for her to buckle up. Okay, no biggie, they can be a pain to tighten properly, so I buckle it up like it is supposed to be. After a few minutes I have it nice and tight but it is ever so slightly canted because her seat is old and worn. This whole time she is getting frustrated because it is taking too long. When I finish she sees that it is slightly crooked and gets pee because people will think she's a bad mom and proceeds to push me out of the way and unbuckle it. Then she loads our daughter into it and speeds away with the car seat literally just resting on the seat. I guess to some people appearances matter more than safety. I followed her and called the police. Then she tried to say I was stalking her to the police. Who saw right through her bulls? You did the right thing never doubt this. Knew a guy in high school whose mom fricked one of his friends after getting too drunk one night, while we were in high school. She also taught him that it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. His mom would buy us alcohol all the time, we were 16. He would have to pick her up from bars from the age of 13 because she was too smashed to drive herself home. Back then I thought she was the coolest. Looking back I realized that she was just a terrible mother and a pretty horrible person overall. Crazy how a few years and maturity can totally alter your perspective. I used to work in Gamer Station, now known as part of Game in the UK and I had two scummy parents were at the counter buying a second hand PS2. They had a cute little girl with them maybe 6 years old or so. Anyway while they were paying for the console the little girl was tugging on the father's coat because she's picked up some crappy kid's game and wants it. After some persistent tugging the dad turns to the kid and yells, FFS, I'm just out the jail can I not have anything for myself and shoves the kid out the way. I was amazed. When I was 7 8 9 ish years old. I was playing soccer alone at the park when this new kid in the neighborhood came with his mother and asked me to play. Of course, I said yes, because you know kicking the ball alone can sometimes be boring. He said he would like to try to do some longer passes, to really kick harder. The younger innocent me was hyped to show him my skills so we did go on and did that. That is where it got dirty. The little guy, seeing I was running the other side of the field, took my ball and started running away with it. He wasn't that fast so I did catch him up, but that is when his mother, that goddamn bee, stretched her foot out and made me fall right on my face. She then took the ball from her son's hands, look at me, and told me, with the most disgusting smile I saw in my life, you are gonna need a new ball, little kid. She drove away with her son and I never saw them again. I'm still looking for revenge. 
comma is it wrong to be more sexually attracted to your own daughter than your wife, a father of his then 13 year old daughter? Yes, yes it is. I've seen a 5 year old bring their younger sibling into school so they can have a breakfast. It angers me more than I can explain that a child of 5 is getting their young sibling up, washed, dressed, and into a school so they can have a breakfast. My brother-in-law comes from a shithole. His family is basically a collection of junkies, drug dealers or just flat out in jail or missing. He had to steal and borrow money or loo food to feed his siblings and cousins because none of the parents gave a frick. They were too busy gambling or jettering high. He was 10. Now he has two kids and he's the best father I know. I've seen a mother give her young child literally nothing but pop tits, Oreos, and little Debbie snacks. I'm not exaggerating, because he just won't eat anything else okay but who's the genius who introduced Twinkies and Ding Dongs to him in the first place, mom? Kid's teeth were rotted and he was very small for his age with no muscle tone whatsoever. Had a student that grew up in a foster care home with 62 dogs. I was told after CPS intervened she would bark and crawl like a dog. This was a middle school age child mind you. When I met her she spoke English for the most part but was extremely quiet. When she was upset she would bark at other students occasionally. My boyfriend's cousin once went on about how nice his 5 year old daughter's butt was. But not butt or bum or anything like that. Even though that would still be borderline not okay. He had her young and is obsessed with getting pee his number one concern when looking for a future girlfriend is that she's as good looking as him. <laughs> yeah, major red flags there. Like big, huge red flags. I knew a girl who was adopted into an extremely conservative religious household in Kansas. She had fetal alcohol syndrome so life was already hard enough, but her adopted parents were awful to the point of abusive. They didn't trust her at all, so they installed locks on the outside of her bedroom and bars on the window to make sure she stayed put. They mostly just screamed at her how she wasn't as good as their real kids. For Christmas every year she just got her bible. Despite that, she still was a wonderfully sweet and friendly girl who had some great friends. She did manage to graduate high school and get a retail job so she could move out. But it doesn't end there, sadly. Her boyfriend sexually assaulted her and then stalked her. He was a cop so the police did nothing. Small town. Her parents didn't believe her either. She got into a terrible car accident and had to be hospitalized for weeks. Neither parent visited her, despite the fact that her mom worked at the hospital she was recovering in. Eventually, she killed herself. Her parents didn't even know for days, because they didn't give a frick about checking in with their obviously depressed daughter. At the wake. They got up and told lies about their daughter, how she was so religious, she wasn't at all, had such loving relationships, she'd been sexually assaulted multiple times, the cop was still stalking her, and they tried their hardest to help her overcome her difficulties. It made me sick. My husband and I took my sister-in-law and our 11 year old nephew to Warwick Castle a few years ago. We were walking around and saw this family. The child was about 13 stroke 14 and was overweight and obviously wasn't used to hearing the word number. He wanted an ice cream and his parents said no because they had just had candy floss. The kid started shouting and whining. Parents still said no. This teenage child then proceeded to stare down his parents, slowly get on the floor and then scream and cry and thrash around having a full on toddler tantrum right in the middle of the castle. The second his parents gave in he stopped screaming and crying, got up and calmly walked to the ice cream place. My nephew turned to us and said what a baby and went to go look at the trebuchet. That nephew better have gotten ice cream. I don't know her personally, thank god for that. But I was once crossing the street after getting pizza with some friends in a more questionable part of town. This lady very much looked like she was cracked out and was pushing one of those toy strollers with her daughter that looked about 8-12 months old. She goes to cross the street at the same crosswalk as us. Looks us dead in the eyes. Jerks the stroller up and swings it in a 180 degree rotation as fast as she could while making the descent from the curb to the road. The child ended up jerking really far forward and the seatbelt in the stroller was essentially the only thing keeping her from flying out into the street. My friends and I just froze in shock in the middle of the road watching her. As she walked by us she spurts out the frick are you looking at of course we were completely speechless. 
but thinking back, it's clear we were looking at the mother of the year. When working in a box store about 10 years ago, a customer reported to me that they found a kid tied to a clothing rack. The mother had used her child leash to tie up her kid in an isolated corner while she shopped. We untied the kid, took him to my manager, and promptly called the cops. My sister, kids are always right, especially her golden child, the first boy, if any of her children scratch or bite you and you tell them no or refuse to carry them straight after she will yell at you, she has pulled golden boy out of school, other two are too young to go, to homeschool him, she's doing a sort of homeschooling though where our don't actually teach them anything, poor kid is 10 and struggles making friends or being social and she has just further damned him socially by doing this. He has no chance of a future if he's not taught English or basic math. Everyone who's seen him recently says he just sure in his room and reads books all day every day because he is so bored. He doesn't care about anyone else's emotions or feeling and is a bully who can't share because he is so used to always getting his way. My sister says it's right because no one should force him to share and he shouldn't have to share if he doesn't want to. She doesn't explain to him that the flip side of this is that other kids don't have to like you when you treat them like crap. And inviting friends around to watch you play with toys that you won't share with anyone is treating people like crap in my eyes. At a coffee shop, I saw a kid tell his mother that he needed to pee. Mom tells the kid to pee in a flower pot inside of the shop. And he promptly did while she carried on eating her breakfast as if nothing was wrong. Worst part is not only am I sure that she knows where the bathrooms are, this idiot had just came with her kid from their home in the building where the coffee shop is. Baby crying and dogs barking while dad and new GF smoked weed and crushed up pills to sprinkle in their wine cups, proceeded to get narcotic wasted and passed out early evening. This happened in a trailer containing far too many chihuahuas and littered with dog fesses. Wish it was legal to just walk in and be like okay, I am taking this baby, bye. This woman who I assumed was the little girl's grandma kept dunking her granddaughter underwater at a hotel pool despite the girl's constant screaming and crying, totally oblivious to the fact that it was disturbing the entire hotel. Wife's friend has two kids and a milquetoast husband, went to the diner where the kids were allowed to climb on furniture, run around and eat as much as they wanted. The boy proceeded to vomit all over the floor a few tables away and ruined some other couple's meal. The parents ignored all of this, made no effort to correct the kid or even clean up the mess. So much rage. I held it in and calmly informed the wife later that I would not subject myself to their company again. The next time they came to visit my wife, I made dang sure I was working. Haven't seen them since. I've been a city firefighter for 20 years next month, and much of that time has been spent working in a district that is extremely low income and high crime, so unfortunately I have seen a lot of children being raised in horrible conditions, especially these last 5 years with the assault of the H epidemic that is currently plaguing us. But the run that immediately came to mind happened about 10 years ago and wasn't drug related, but was simply horrible decision making by a parent. It was summer, late afternoon, and we were sent for a person struck by a vehicle. When we arrived, the patient, a 24-ish year old male, was on the ground in the middle of a large apartment complex access road, and he was being restrained by the ambulance crew. He had an altered level of consciousness, only responded to painful stimuli, his pupils were blown, or one was dilated and the other pinpoint, I can't remember, and he was combative as heck. He also had blood coming out of both ears, and when we used a 4x4 bandage to collect the blood, it showed it contained cerebral spinal fluid, not good signs at all. As we jumped in to help the ambulance crew, I checked the car nearby for damage and found none. There was an older lady, maybe late 40s, standing next to the vehicle while she was being questioned by a police officer on the scene. Long story short, the patient started crashing fast. He was rushed to the hospital where we later learned he died. The police officer came over as we were cleaning up the scene and said did you hear what happened? Apparently the patient was the woman's son. She was leaving to go to the liquor store and had refused to buy her son beer. He got upset and jumped on her car, laughing, and said something like you're taking me there even if I have to ride out here. Then, according to her statement, she took off, gradually building up speed. He managed to climb from the hood to the roof where he was laying on his belly, screaming for her to stop, 
while holding onto the front windshield. She estimated she was going 30 to 40 miles per hour when she slammed on the brakes, shooting him headfirst into the road, killing her son. I knew an Asian girl in school whose parents were constantly on her for grades. She was taking all honors, had straight A's, did extracurricular activities and community service, and at the end was accepted to Harvard. Our school had a party at the end of the year for graduates, and I remember talking to her there. We were never super close, always said hi to each other type thing. But that night she hugged me and she said she couldn't believe it was over, and that she was finally happy. The next day we found out she killed herself. She achieved what her parents wanted, but not what she wanted. And because of that, a beautiful, young, very intelligent girl died. It's freaking bulls. If I ever have children I will always help them pursue what they want, not what I want from them. Freaking heck. This is the one that's got me. That's truly heartbreaking. No one should ever feel pressure that harsh. Ever. I cannot imagine having to put everything I want on hold just to satisfy my overbearing parents. I'm sorry that you had to go through it, even as you said you weren't close. This must have hurt you. Saw a little girl fall down the stairs at a ski resort. She was clearly having trouble carrying her skis and poles. Father proceeds to scream at her. What are you doing? Those are expensive. Then he just stood there impatiently huffing as she picked herself up, awkwardly trying to carry her skis and poles and running after him looking ashamed. I've met adults who are somehow completely oblivious that children aren't as physically capable as an adult. We offered to rent a room to a buddy of ours while he was going through his divorce. I walked into the kitchen to find his daughter, 7 years old, asking me to feed her because she's hungry. I was the only other person home, so I fed her and called him to see where the heck he was at. He was at the bar. He left his daughter at home. Told no one. My sister does this sometimes because people stopped agreeing to babysit her terrible bratty kids. So she just drops them off when no one's looking. I mean, I saw the autopsy report of a 4 year old who was beaten to death with a belt by his father. I'd say that ranks up there. I was going to pick up take out food around after school time. There was a lady and a small boy around 5-6 standing by the parking lot. The boy was drinking a coke, when then he turned and tossed it about 15 featuring over by a tree. He looked at me and I said are you just going to leave that there? His mother whipped around and asked me if I was talking to her son. I replied that I was asking him if it was his intention to leave his litter by the tree. She went off about not talking to her child. There was a back and forth for about 15 seconds. Meanwhile the boy realizing he was wrong went to go pick up the can. The mom firmly told him no, but he said it's okay and walked over picked up the can and walked back to his mom. She snatched it out of his hand and promptly threw it back by the tree. Stared me down and dragged the boy across the street. It's even worse when the child knows they're being parented wrong. God this is so petty. I've posted this story before but my friend wanted an iPod when they first came out. He saved his money for nearly a year to buy his own. When his parents took him to buy it. His little sister started throwing a tantrum because she wanted one too. His parents bought her one just to shut her up. A guy saved up to buy my first car, just a little junker but I was so proud. And then a few months later my parents bought my brother his first car, not because he threw a tantrum or anything, just because they felt like he needed one and he didn't have any savings to buy one himself. Great lesson, mom and dad. Working in a supermarket I saw a woman with her. 3 year old who was toddling around. The mom said to the child go get some salt, and the daughter eagerly toddled over to grab some. She brought back a bag of salt and the mom loudly screamed not that one you see in front of a whole load of people in the island store. My mouth just dropped open. It was so surreal. I informed the security guys but I don't know if anything came of it. The barrier to entry for parenthood is so, so low. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.